Okay, let's see. Let me get this straight. Hello, this is May Vu, relationship expert. And it's funny because today's Facebook Live is all about me. <laughs> and I have been struggling, thinking about, pondering about these questions for a while now. And just do I get uh, married or not? I was going to say, do I get pregnant? Thank God that has been decided. I cannot get <laughs> pregnant. So not a problem on that one. But the question is, why do it? Exactly, Debbie. You get my point. Why do it? <laughs> ah, oh, oh, good. Keith is on here, too. <laughs> if I do it, it would be with him. And he hasn't asked. Do I really need him to ask? I have no freaking idea. All of this conversation is super uncomfortable. Oh, oh so much noise. Is that on my end or your end or what's happening? I don't know. Let me see. I'm blowing up. I love it. Hi, everyone. I guess you like this question. Hi, Patty. Right? Debbie said, why do it? And Patty said, why not? Are you guys in my head? This is exactly what I'm thinking about every day. Why do it? Do I not? <laughs> and so I actually had started a thread on um, Facebook. I think it's on your side, Sandra. Are you on two things or uh, two devices or just one? I'm not on another device. Oh, I wonder why it's so is it Maybe is it my, um, oh, you know what? I know what it is. Oh, Hang good. On. Okay, you figure that out. I'll, I'll keep setting this up. Oh, good. Dale is on. He's getting married. My brother is getting married and he just met her three weeks ago or four weeks ago. So it's like, yeah, we're not going to talk about him because he doesn't like to be okay. talked about it in, uh, in public. But I already said that. Oops. Anyway, whatever. Uh -oh. But that um, better? Yes, much better. Okay, so, perfect. So there's all these romantic notions. Well, I'm way too old and jaded for romantic notions. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a relationship coach. Hello. <laughs> but I am a very, pra when it comes to love and all this stuff, I'm very practical and pragmatic. And so Sandra popped in and talked a, uh, about, um, Sandra, your expertise is caregiving, right? And caregiving tend to tend to be working with people who are at the latter part of, the, of their life. Right. Yeah. And so it comes with complications if you're not married and all this stuff. So go ahead, honey, scare right. me into marriage. <laughs> <laughs> I'm certainly not trying to scare anybody into anything. <laughs> um, I, I just thought the conversation was an interesting conversation because on one side of it, we have people who you know, mm -hmm. are against marriage for all the legal reasons. I don't want to do the business transaction or, you know, whatever those things are. And, and, and then there's people on the other side who are, you know, feeling the effects of not having the full protection of being married. So, um, you know, romantic notions aside, this becomes about, you know, how, sort of how we feel as we age. And part of that's companionship and, and what that deeper commitment means. And do we really feel like we have that deeper commitment without marriage? Some people do, some people don't. Um, but then it's the implications at the end of life and what, you know, what those things mean. Yeah, and that's that part I don't know anything about. <laughs> and that is why I, I, I know I was joking, but I think it's true. I think you're going to, like, scare me into it. I have to just be honest. And before, before this conversation, a, a while ago, I met this woman who's very successful and had lots of money and everything. And her stand was she's not getting married because she doesn't want to marry her partner, even though they're committed for life. Because if something happened to him, the government will... Um, will uh, will go after, not the government, the Medicare and all that stuff will go after her fortune before he would qualify for Medicare. So, so she wasn't going to get married. So I'm like, note to self, if we're going to have a, create our own fortune, don't get married because you don't want, you know, the state to take your income. <laughs> but 
at the moment, I don't have that problem to worry about. <laughs> but I would like to have that problem to worry about. But at this moment, I don't have the problem to worry about. And Keith is getting older, and he is um, healing his cancer. But to be honest, I don't really know how that's going to play out or what's going to be next year look like. You know, all I know is he looks skinnier and skinnier every day. <laughs> so every day I'm like taking his pulse going, do we need to rush to get married now? Oh, no, you're fine. You're going to last another 20 years. Oh, no, today you look bad. <laughs> That's what it's like in my head. <laughs> you know, and I think the stage and age does kind of take out a lot of that romanticism of this because it all those things that we're trying to avoid by it not being a business transaction or some kind of legal thing um, puts us right into having to make legal decisions. And your friend who has, you know, amassed a large amount of money is exactly right if she was married um, then her income would count towards, you know, some for Medicaid purposes or, or now VA planning because they just came out actually yesterday with changes in how veterans benefits are going to be decided and that's going to start next month. So there's not a lot of time to plan for that. Um, I will tell you. <laughs> Wait, but neither one of us is a veteran, so we don't, <laughs> that doesn't apply to All right, okay, you don't have to worry about that, but you know. It's a big change to, you know, the senior industry. And um, I think that an elder law attorney would tell you not to get married um, at this stage mm -hmm. because of financial implications. Um, Why not? So if you do it, it's um, because there's so many mm -hmm. things that you bring in financially to a relationship, especially at these later stages in life that do complicate how care um, you, you know, if you need other resources, then it does complicate qualifying for different resources. Okay, wait, you have to say that again, because, you know, when I'm in fear, I, can, I don't hear very well. <laughs> I'm hyperventilating <laughs> in my head, actually. <laughs> so what you're saying is, what? <laughs> so I'm saying that um, an elder law attorney would tell you not to get married. Okay. Because okay. there's a lot of financial implications when it comes to later in life care that can really cause a big mess unless you do things really, really, really well on the front end with, you know, trusts and different things like that. And I'm not an attorney and none of this is legal advice. So I just want to make that clear. I don't want to throw around words. These are, that, these are questions know. that we should be right. asking other experts as a Correct. result of this conversation. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Right. And it is, it's just funny to me how, again, the legality of things, you know, that people are afraid of, um, really they'll come to bite us on one side or the other. <laughs> so you have to decide because legally, if you're married and your spouse is sick and there's no documents, like there's no power of attorney for healthcare or anything like that, legally, the spouse is the next of kin. In, in probably all 50 states. I don't know of a state that that's not true. So, um, and then there's a progression from there. Um, so if you get married, you don't really have to have that discussion because you know that your spouse is gonna take care of things for you. If you're not married, and this was one of the other things that came up, then you have to have that discussion about who is going to make those decisions because I don't know if Keith has children, I think he does. So, okay, four children, yes. So unless he names somebody to make decisions for him, all four mm -hmm. of those children have equal say in what happens. And they can say, we don't want May at the hospital at all. We don't like May. And, and you're cut out completely of somebody that you've been living with. So you've got to have some ugly conversation somewhere along the way about all of this. Well, it, it actually is true. I mean, I've seen that happen firsthand mm -hmm. with a member of my family that when their, I will use <laughs> incognito terms, their partner fell really sick and almost died. The family did swoop in mm -hmm. and threw that someone out of the the picture and completely took over her asset, everything, and that someone not only is heartbroken but have no right to 
be part of the conversation, whatever.、Mm-hmm. And it was really terrible. At the same time, that's not a good reason to get married either. Just because you're right, right? That, that could right. happen. Wait, this conversation is supposed to make me feel better and give me a clear answer, <laughs> not to make me ping pong faster. Okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm I'm scratching my head. <laughs> okay, so so let's say let's 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 start with. Wait, you were supposed to scare me into marriage, but so far what you're saying is scaring me out of marriage. <laughs> like, well, okay, so if you don't have any money, get married. <laughs> oh. <laughs> If you don't have money or any、that's、resources, get married. Get that's married. what makes you happy. That's why I'm poor、sorry? people get married all the time. <laughs> they don't have any mar-、right. merit and money, so they get married to feel better, and then they spend money. <laughs> and then, why don't you have some kids on top of that? That is always a good solution. <laughs> right. Well, you're not going to have any kids, so <laughs> right. I'm beyond that age. Thank you. That's one last decision、yeah. to make. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay. It just depends, you know. Getting married or not getting married just depends on which discussion you want to have. Yeah. So okay. So let's have the conversation. I should get married. I get. I should get married because then you're all quiet. We're all quiet. This is. <laughs> <laughs> so then, okay. So what? What do you benefit from getting married? I I don't know. What are the benefits for me to get married? So, what I've heard so far is that you can automatically kind of assume that you have half of whatever he he has or or they have. Okay. And then、okay. when you go into the hospital, you can you can just say, "I'm mar- I'm his wife or I'm her husband," and nobody、right. ever check. Nobody ever check anyway. Why can't I just walk into a hospital and say, "I'm his wife"? Well, his children could say, "No, she's not." <laughs> Oh, those bastards! No, I'm just kidding. Don't watch this. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, legally, they could take it to a step where you're going to have to prove you're his wife. Okay. You know, at the hospital, the doctor's not going to say, "Oh, are you really his wife? Go get your marriage certificate." But、right. legally, they could take action. Yeah. Okay. At some point. Okay. So that's it. That that's all the benefit to getting married. Well, I mean, you you love him. Well, that's unquestioned. I mean, whether I'm married or not, I still love him. I mean, I I would feel、right. good, and I'd have a a a ring on my finger to、right. like brag. Right. But I could just go buy a fake cubic zirconia ring and brag anyway. It's no big deal. <laughs> right. Or I could、right. pull out my old wedding ring from the other marriage and just say, "Come on." <laughs> Oh God! As you can see, I do not have such high, <laughs> high <laughs> respect for this institution. It, I cry. I do, though. I do cry all the time when I when there's a wedding or or a, a scene in the movie. So it's not like it doesn't move me, and I I'm not cold hearted inside, but I just can't seem to get like really.、Um, Uh, at peace with this. Well,、uh, you know, I think it's really hard, and this discussion really just came out of you know legalities on this side or legalities on another. But there is that emotional component of what makes a person feel comfortable. Like for me, I don't know that I can go through the rest of my life and not have that commitment. I just don't know that I'm ever going to feel that sense of satisfaction of not having that. Commitment of somebody saying, you know, I'm wed to you forever.、Um, that could change. I don't know, but that's just kind of how I feel right now. Like I think at some point I would want to be married again and know I have that commitment. Although common, pra- I mean, all the legal advice would tell me not to do that. Ha!、Huh. That's interesting, because everyone who has been commenting on that thread said、mm-hmm. legally you should. <laughs> You, that it's more advantageous to be married, and I'm like, oh, okay, let's do it. <laughs> I wish I had the presentation this attorney did. That、um, I'm sure I have it somewhere, but it is an interesting, 
it's really just about the financial aspects of getting married later in life. Yes, and you need to find that. We need to find <laughs> that. Because I don't need to get married to have kids. That's done. Right. Uh, I don't need to get married to, to prove that I'm worthy. I'm a worthy woman. <laughs> That's done. Right. Check. I already know right. that. I don't even need a marriage like that last point that you said to feel like someone's committing to me every day we wake up and look at each other every <laughs> i'm gonna be really graphic on this one because he's healing his can his prostate cancer so he has to do <laughs> do a lot of um uh, uh what is that alternative medicine so one of the altern alternative medicine that he has to do is um do suppository that is made out of coconut oil and and uh, CBD oil, <laughs> cannabis. <laughs> so, well, you must really love him. See, eh? every time I watch him show <laughs> one of those commitment. things, that's I'm that's commitment. Commitment. I mean, that, it's like I, I'm in it for life. I'm, I'm not going anywhere, go. right? And now go get some legal documents. <laughs> <laughs> so what I'm actually hearing you say is that I don't have to get married. I can have as many parties as I want to and go get some legal documents so that these things are handled. Like right. whatever money he wants to leave me, which I hope a lot, um, should have my name clearly on it. <laughs> uh, what else? Uh, uh, oh, power of eternity, access to his bank account. Right? Well, that's a thing too. You don't want... You don't want to necessarily share a bank account because, again, should you get into a medical situation where you need to qualify for Medicaid, then, um, yes, yes, the good side of that is that they can only count half of his bank account if it's in your name as well. But let's just say he had creditors that are coming after him for whatever reason, then, um, or you had creditors coming after you, whichever way that goes, that if you guys have a joint bank account, that means both your money is at risk. Right? So exactly. That's not, that's not necessarily the good way to do it either. <laughs> <laughs> Which is why you need legal advice, but. <laughs> hey, but, but you're pointing me to, to questions that I need to be asking. And, and this is making sense to me now. Like, I kind of know these things, but it's nice to hear it clearly laid out and yes debbie it's true you don't have to be married you could have a poa what is that power of attorney, of attorney. and also a not doa not dead on arrival but a dpoa a, DP -O -A. a durable is, power of attorney what is that what does that mean it's um it's a power of attorney that has i oh, i get mm -hmm. these confused so i might be wrong it is a um power of attorney that has specific criteria in which it becomes effective or, or it's the opposite and that it's always effective. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, look it up people. And then yeah. the, the other thing too, that I heard is that there's also another form that you need to fill out so that at, at your bank. So if one of us take a sudden exit, um, <laughs> uh, the other one can access that bank account so that you can have access to mm -hmm. money to pay bills and whatever while everything is in chaos and mayhem and all that stuff right and that's a that's a financial power of attorney that's a financial i thought it was a form at the bank that you just go in and fill out it's like d keith if you're still watching could you type it in i forget what that is anyway i'm married and i have a will and i will be giving my daughter my poa as well as leaving everything else to may now you guys heard that straight up here so <laughs> <laughs> hey can i get a little i'm on this video <laughs> <laughs> thanks debbie that's really sweet of you we just met <laughs> okay so Sad to say, I am not convinced that I'm going to get married from this conversation. It's actually very unromantic. And um, I can stop pressuring him or insinuating that he should ask me to marry him. Well, you know, where is that coming from, May, that you want that you're insinuating that? I don't know. I'm just so confused. I'm one bloody confused mm -hmm. mess. <laughs> and, huh. I mean, I could just imagine, even if he popped the question and with a big ring, I mean, 
part of me would be like, oh yeah, I finally got the ring and all that hoo ha that all girls. See, mm-hmm. suddenly I'm now reduced down to girls, not women anymore. But my woman is kind of like, here, what does this really mean? What's the implication of this? <laughs> It means you got a really fat, big ring mm-hmm. that you get to walk around with. That's what it means. And feel superior to other women who don't have the fat, big ring. Right, right. We are psycho, psycho. We are psycho. Me, me, me. <laughs> and I still, so I still think there's like this underlying thing in most of us. Oh, Debbie fun. has a great idea. Be engaged forever. Then I, I can agree. have the big fat ring without the big fat hoo ha of the legality and just keep fighting. <laughs> I agree with Debbie. Mm-hmm. Debbie, you have been the sound, the voice of sanity for me this whole time, and so is Sandra. Thank you so much for bringing in that mm-hmm. thing about you know, le- all the legal people would say there's no. Oh, what about tax implication? Does that help anything? Mm-hmm. No, um, I don't know. I don't think it's. I mean, that I, I think there's benefits, but I don't know. It depends. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, there you have it. Yeah, Just not going to get married this year or in this like lifetime. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can do one of those. I'm married to myself kind of wedding. If I really, you know, I'm just going to put on an event and invite people to come and change people's life. To, to be honest, during my event, I feel yeah, like a wedding. It. It's a big party. Everybody loves it being there. We, we benefit and there's a meaning to it. So it's not just about looking at me and my wedding dress and that I was able to fit into a size smaller than what I normally wear and, and your life change. And I feel like a life worth living. So there, I don't need a marriage to entertain myself or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> feel special that's it i, I still... think a lot of time people get married because they're bored and they don't feel special and they need to have one special day i i don't disagree with that but i also i also think there's still just something to this mm-hmm. we still feel this need um somehow to have this connection like even in this conversation it's like well we're talking about all these legalities and stuff and it's like but I get to have this ring. Like there's just still this part of us that feels like that connection is somehow necessary. The psychotic part of us. Maybe mm-hmm. it's, you know, I don't know what it is. But... The psychotic part of us. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> no, honestly, uh, seriously, the reason why I was starting to ask this question is because I recently just came back from a, um, uh, uh, what is that? A, a celebration of someone's life. And, the <laughs> the the wife and the mom, you know, the matriarch, she sat there and everyone came over and said, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, you know, Bob died and blah, 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 all this stuff. It was so touching. And to be honest, I had this flash forward where I'm like, oh, shit, Keith died. We're going to have a, a memorial. I'm Asian. He's white. People are going to think I'm the nursemaid, the Filipino nursemaid that they invited. And his ex-wife is going to be there with their four kids and everything. And they're going to come up. And she still has the name. She is Mrs. Cuddyback, not me. I'm Mei Vu, the, you know, Thai woman caretaker. <laughs> so anyway, there was a little bit of an ego thing and a little, maybe not a little, a lot. And I was like, wait, I want to be recognized. You know, mistaken for my for my cliche relationship. <laughs> See, and I think we should honor those thoughts and not call them psycho <laughs> because they're real things. None of this reason is good logic to get married. That's the bottom line of this whole Facebook Live. Is that's true? There is no good reason to get married other than sentimental crazy shit you make up in your head to feel better or feel belonging but if you do feel belong to each other you don't really need all that stuff Mm -hmm. okay do you feel you're in your heart and married or not have you protected yourself estate planning blah will and trust see we just talk about that it's like if you get your estate plan your will your trust all down and all your forms are done then 
then you don't really need to get uh, get married unless you want a big party. And my solution to needing a big party is every year I put on my own event and invite people to come and change their life. Well, that satisfies that need to have an event and, and celebration and play and and being together and community in, in, in groups. So I really can't convince myself to say yes. So, look for that that wedding invitation card soon. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> or the celebration, or the a commitment, or That's right. <laughs> yeah, or the May got a big ass ring. Yeah. In fact, I've been trolling Facebook Marketplace and seeing you know people selling their old stuff and all that, and they have big fat wedding rings for a very discounted price. I'm like, hey, I could just get that ring. <laughs> If I really and then need people a big will say, Oh, oh, you and you and Keith are engaged, and he'll be like, Are we? Yes, we are. Isn't that, isn't that so good? That ring she bought herself. Yes, That's it's modern. Carrot. Yes, mm -hmm. anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first world problem. We are bored with our life and we don't know what to do with ourselves, so we create all these things. The trouble is. Well, actually, we're so old that we don't have to worry about the falling apart of the marriage this this time. You know? <laughs> because the last time, that didn't go well. And then you have to do all these asset splitting and <laughs> headache splitting and all that stuff. But we don't have to worry about right. that this time. Okay. All right. I'm <laughs> getting hot and uncomfortable. <laughs> and I'm going to be done with it. <laughs> And I know. Conclusion for today. Still not convinced that I should get married. <laughs> and Sandra confirmed that for me. Thank you for at least bringing some sanity for me. <laughs> you are welcome. Anytime. Have a great day, everyone, wherever you are. Sending you lots and lots of love. And But if you want someone to to consider getting married or not getting married with, you don't have that person in your life, then you really should talk to me. I can help you with that. And if you're with someone who needs some caretaking or you're entering that phase in life, you should talk to Sandra. She really does know what she's talking about. And she's very helpful <laughs> in this department of later life. All the fun things that we all have to face. Yes. <laughs> Fine. All right. Up. Bye. Good night. You know what you uh, want. Glad to be sounding board. Thank you. Namaste. Bye.